Thank you all for being here. This morning, our state is in shock, and I want to take this moment to speak directly to the people of our state. To our first responders, I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of your courage. I'm in awe of your strength. I'm in awe of everything you do for each and every one of us. You saw a crisis, and you said, what can I do to help? And our response teams are doing everything in our power to rescue and recover the victims of this collapse literally as we speak. People who, as we speak, are out there are divers, are air assets, people who right now are working to save lives and are doing it because the state asked. And we will update the public as the work continues. To our partners inside and outside of government, I know this has been a long night. We started coordinating immediately after the Key Bridge collapsed. We've been standing together every step of the way from our county leadership to our city leadership to our state leadership to our federal leadership. And I'm grateful to call each and every one of you not just colleagues, but I'm grateful to call you friends. And to the people of Baltimore and each and every one of the 6.3 million Marylanders who call our state home. I recognize that many of us are hurting right now. I recognize that many of us are scared right now. And so I want to be very clear about where everything stands. We are still investigating what happened, but we are quickly gathering details. The preliminary investigation points to an accident. We haven't seen any credible evidence of a terrorist attack. Our administration is working closely with leaders from all levels of government and society to respond to this crisis and not but just by addressing the immediate aftermath, but also by building a state that is more resilient and a state that's more safe. That is our pledge and that's our commitment and we're going to keep that commitment. And lastly, to the victims of this tragedy and their loved ones. All of our hearts are broken. We feel your loss. We're thinking of you. And we will always be thinking of you. We pray for the construction workers who are on the key bridge. And we pray for everyone who has been touched by this tragedy and their families and all of their loved ones. But Maryland, we will get through this because that is the Maryland spirit, and that's what Maryland is made of. We are Maryland tough, and we are Baltimore strong. So in the face of heartbreak, we come together. We embrace one another, and we come back stronger. That's what we've always done. That's what we'll continue to do, and that's what we're going to get done together. And we're going to pray for Baltimore. And I'd like to turn this over to Senator Van Hollen, who's done a remarkable job in our fellow delegation in providing support. So thank you, Senator. Thank you, Governor. As the Governor said, we come together. We come together in Baltimore. We come together in Maryland. First of all, our hearts go out to all those who are on the bridge and their loved ones. We pray for them. Our gratitude goes out to the first responders who, as we speak, are out there continuing to conduct search and rescue operations. I want to thank the governor, the local, the mayor, the county executive, all the people gathered here as part of Team Baltimore and Team Maryland. And the federal government is with them as a partner. The Coast Guard, as we speak, is also part of this mission. Coast Guard cutters, Coast Guard aviation assets. I spoke uh, twice today uh, with Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg has pledged that they will do everything they can to very quickly release emergency response funds for this important project. The National Highway Transportation Administration uh, Administrator is on his way to Baltimore if he's not here already. Uh, they will be releasing those early funds once all, all the parties are fully engaged. Second, 
the National Transportation Safety Board. I talked to the chair this morning. Uh, she and her team will be conducting an investigation of what happened. And finally, the Army Corps of Engineers, naval assets uh, for uh, looking uh, below the All of this is going to be uh, The governor uh, is leading Team Maryland. The mayor and the county executive, of course, Team Baltimore. Uh, but I'm just here to say, together with Ben Cardin, Senator Cardin, um, and Congressman Fume and others, the federal government is your partner in this effort. Thank you, and again, to the people of our state and the people of this great city. We're with you. We love with you. We will get through this together. Thank you, Governor. Morning again, uh, Paul Wiedefeld, Secretary of Transportation. Just a few updates uh, since our meeting this morning. Um, the, uh, the crew that was out there working was basically repairing potholes, just so you understand that. It had nothing to do with a structural issue at all at the, at the, in the facility. Um, at this time, one person has been uh, rescued and so far, and <clears throat> our, continue, our efforts continue in, in terms of that. Um, engineers are on site right now determining both some of the structural issues, obviously some of the debris field, and we'll start to work that, but we'll work hand in hand with the NTSB before we take any further action in that area. With that, I did want to introduce the FBI for a few comments as well. Hello, my name is Bill Del Bano. I'm the special agent in charge of the Baltimore Field Office. First and foremost, I want to say that our hearts go out to everyone that is impacted by this tragedy, especially the victims and their families. On behalf of the FBI, I would like to say that we are with you, we're with Baltimore, and we're with the partners every step of the way. The FBI, on very first, looking at and assessing this matter from an investigative standpoint, I want to be clear that there is no specific or credible information to suggest that there are ties to terrorism in this incident. The FBI has been part of this response from the beginning. We uh, came within one hour to the command post and quickly lashed up with our very strong partners all along the way. We will bring whatever resources that the FBI has to bear. We've already brought our crisis response our victim services, and just recently our underwater search evidence recovery teams are on site. And we will continue to provide all those resources as long as it takes. And as the investigation goes on, we will take it to a conclusion along with our partners. To the pe people of Baltimore, to the public, I ask you to be patient as we go through this and as information becomes available to us. And lastly, I want to say thank you. Thank you to our partners. Thank you to everyone who um, in the FBI and counts on the FBI. We will always bring what we need to the people of Baltimore, and we are with you. I'd next like to introduce the Coast Guard. Good morning. The Coast Guard is still actively searching at this time. We are using response boat crews from two of our local Coast Guard stations, one of our Hilo crews from Atlantic City, and Cutter crews on one of our 87-foot patrol boats. We will continue to work with our local, state, and federal partners during this tragedy. Thank you. As far as you are aware, was the collapse of that bridge inevitable as that ship hit that part of the bridge? No, I mean, we're, we're still in the process of investigating exactly what happened, uh, so we, we don't have any further details uh, to about whether or not it was inevitable or not. But no structural issue with the bridge? No, there was, uh, in fact, the bridge was actually fully up to code, so we have no further information about uh, what, was the, what, what happened during that time. Governor, is all, shipping, is all shipping in and out of the port now stopped completely, and do you have any estimate very early on as to how long it will be before shipping can resume to the port of Baltimore? Yeah, we, we, don't have, uh, we don't have any estimates 
on timeline because right now our exclusive focus is on saving lives. Our exclusive focus is on search and rescue. Could you give us a better sense for the number? Because we've heard, I know Mr. Wiedefeld said one had been rescued, but earlier from Baltimore we heard that two have been rescued. Can you tell us the total numbers we're talking about that may be that you're searching for and how many have been rescued? Well, there are eight individuals, uh, six are being uh, searched for right now. One is at, um, was taken to the hospital, and one is uh, not in the hospital that we were speaking to. So six unaccounted for? Yes. And does that involve individuals that may have been a vehicle for the water? Is that just a construction crew? We believe it's a construction crew. What about okay, so we don't think there's anyone in, in vehicles in the water? No, we do not believe so. Okay, we'll take questions right here. Take this question here. Two questions. Have fish tanks that you find out about what happened here? What is your reaction to the scale of what you've heard from the world? Well, I mean, I think it was probably within minutes of, of, of everything, less than an hour, when I know that my phone first rang. Uh, and, you know, first from the, the mayor of Baltimore and also from our chief of staff. Um, and it was, uh, we know the Key Bridge. I've ridden over the Key Bridge countless times. So many of us know the Key Bridge because it is our normal commute. This is a place that is a normal commute route for over 30,000 Marylanders every single day. And so to hear the words that the Key Bridge has collapsed, it's shocking um, and heartbreaking. And immediately, our, the first thought and the first ideas go back. What happened to the people? Where are we? What was the impact on on on, on human life? Um, but for every single one of us who are Marylanders, the words that the key bridge is gone, it it still shakes us because for over for 47 years that's all we've known. And so this is a. Uh, this is this is uh, not just not just unprecedented from what we're seeing and what we're looking at today. Um, it's heartbreaking. Governor, can you confirm that the crew on the ship uh, alerted authorities that it had lost propulsion and was in trouble? Uh, we, we can we can confirm that uh, that the, the crew uh, notified uh, notified authorities of a, of a power issue. Yes. And that they had lost power on the ship. Yes. Sir. Was there any ability to shut down the bridge before it ended? I'll take the question right here. Gotcha. A total of eight, <clears throat> one rescued and in hospital, one uh, not in hospital, but it is, uh, we have communicated with that person, and then six that we are searching for. The, um, yes, they were all related to the construction program, yes. We heard that multiple vehicles went into the water. Any word on how many vehicles went into the water and the condition of those people that were in Not at this time. I was going to shift over here. Was there any way to uh, shut down the bridge? Was there enough time for that distress call to trigger something like that? Now, the, the thing that we know is that, uh, you know, even as the boat was coming in, you know, we had a ship that was coming in at eight knots. Uh, so coming in at a, at a, at a, very, a very rapid speed. Um, we do know that uh, the investigation is, is, is currently going on. Uh, but I, I have to say I'm thankful for the folks who, who once, the, you know, once the warning came up and once notification came up uh, that there was a May Day, who literally by being able to stop cars from coming over the bridge, uh, these people are heroes. They saved lives last, they saved lives last night. Focuses on rescue now, and humanity. Yeah. but looking forward, is there any vision for how long it could possibly take to move the wreckage to be filled? How it could possibly be done? Can you look into the future at all? At this, point? this is going to be a long-term build. It's going to be a build that's going to require every asset and every aspect. Anything that I can tell you, we are going to get this done. We are going to make sure that that this is is not just not just rebuilt, but that we are going to rebuild in a way that remembers the people who this tragedy has impacted, and also do it in a way that uh, that honors the community uh, that it serves. 
but um, but right now uh, I could not give you any form of estimate on timing or, or cost. Right now, uh, my and all of our exclusive focus is we're just trying to save lives. Yes, thank you. Uh, listen, we, we know the governor issued a state of emergency, but we at the local level uh, felt the need to do that too because there may be some things that we have to encumber with our fire department and other agencies that we'll be able to pull down support for as we all work together again as we're focused right now on saving lives and working through this unspeakable tragedy. Is there some clarity? I know that there's obviously the focus is on the rest of the Yeah, so so we've also uh, already been in touch with people about alternative routes uh, and ways people can navigate uh, now that this tragedy has happened. And I don't know, Secretary, if you want to speak to that as well. Just to give you a sense of scale, roughly uh, about uh, 35,000 people you know, a day use that facility. About double that use the Harvard Tunnel, and double that again use the Fort McHenry Tunnel. So basically, we do have those two other options. Uh, we'll, have, we'll make sure that we have as much uh, personnel out there to deal with any incidents, because as you know, that can cause the backups very quickly. And we will basically put out a lot of communication on different alternatives. We're also looking at transit alternatives as well. What role will the legislature play in this response? What role will the legislature play in this response? Are there any policies, any actions that you can put in the coming weeks? Oh, yeah. No, so we're, we are, uh, in fact, you know, we have our, our Senate president here. We have members of the legislature here. The legislature is going to have a role uh, in all of this, as will our local elected officials, as will state officials, as will the federal government. Uh, everybody is going to have a role in terms of how we think about the rebuild. Governor, how long do you expect shipping to be closed down through the port? Do you have any estimate that in terms of the, the port here? We, we, we don't at this point. But we don't at this point. Are going in or out at this time? Correct. Yeah, we have, and we, do, we, don't have, we don't have an estimate on timeline as of yet. Uh, our focus really is right now on just make sure we're saving lives. One last question. I'm sorry, say it again. Um, the, the one that's that's uh, captured under the is that is that, is that still at port? Oh, yes, that one. That one's still at port. Yes. We'll take one, last one last question. question. Yes, ma'am. Was the ship being guided out by tug? Yes, ma'am. So the investigation is still going on, so we're going to have all the full details uh, and also all the full details about the timeline and the TikTok that took place. But we're thankful that between the May Day and the collapse that, uh, that we had officials who were able to, to begin to stop the flow of traffic so more cars would not end up on the bridge. And, and I can there were some on the bridge or not? Were there any well, during the collapse. Yeah. Were there some on the bridge? There's been reports that have been sonar that have detected vehicles at the bottom of the water. So as well as the eight people, there could still be people trapped inside or potentially in vehicles at that time? I think, well, the investigation is still going on uh, to find out exactly exactly how many people and what the situation. But the thing that we do know is that, uh, is that uh, many of the vehicles were stopped before they got onto the bridge, which, uh, which, which uh, saved lives in a, in, a, in a very, very heroic way. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll have another update later. Thank you. 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 Thank you.